to talk to you about attention. What is attention? What is the movement of attention? And what are the ways and methods of raising our attention? Keep it in broad ways, all right? But when I am saying all these things, you must know that I am talking to you individually. It's not about others. Always the first thing human beings do is when I am speaking to you, you try to find out about whom Mataji is speaking. This is the best way of putting your attention onto something else. If you put your attention to yourself that this is for me and me and me alone, then it will have an effect because these are mantras. And that's why it is wasted because whatever is given to you is thrown on to another person. So the attention that you have is the only way to know the reality. Your own attention is important, not the attention of others or your attention on others. This must be clearly understood. If you understand this point that the whole thing is to be consumed by you through your attention to raise yourself to a higher situation, it will work out. Otherwise it is like giving food to you and going to another person who is getting nourished while you are getting nothing. And that person also may not be able to get nourished because he doesn't know that you are throwing it to that person. So today as I am going to speak to you about attention, you should know that your attention should absorb all that I am saying. It is not meant for anybody else. You better sit in thoughtless awareness, that's the best way, so that it goes into you. Otherwise, it's like a lecture, you know, that you listen to me has no effect. Every lecture will transform you, because after all, I am speaking. But because you always think of others and you think of your problems all the time, something nonsensical is going on about which you are worried and the attention is so overloaded that whatever is said to you doesn't go into you. So just now utilize it by being attentive and knowing that all these nonsensical things have no value. It's your attention that has to come up and has to grow. So attention is the whole of the canvas of your being. It's a complete canvas. Is the attention. Complete canvas of your being is the attention. How much you have gone into it, how much you have discovered it, how far you have raised it, is a different point. Attention is chitta and God is attention. How far your attention has been enlightened is a different point. But your attention is God. If you become enlightened to that extent, <coughs> It is like a canvas. You can say it is like a canvas which is spread out for a film. And there were aptitudes or you can say the drags or movements of your attention has shows on that canvas. I don't know what is the word for vritti in English language. It's not aptitude but a person gets prone to or his attention is dragged to. I don't know there's a word like that for in English language, vritti. Can you suggest any word? So our attention is just a pure, completely pure canvas and is acted upon by the three gunas we have to begin with. And the three gunas come to you as you know, one from your past, one from your future sense and one from the present. Now whatever have been your experiences about a particular thing or a particular occasion so far is completely recorded in your memory. For example, if you see the black color, all that goes with the black color is recorded in your memory. As soon as you see this black color, quite a lot of it comes up. That means as soon as you see this with your attention, the attention gets muddled up or you can say the attention gets colored with all the memories about this black color. And then your action takes place according 
to the way your attention is affected for example just now something was burned by these flames now all of you became aware of it next time when you whenever you will see a flame first thing will happen will be that you will be cautious about it it is not going to happen again but the whole memory will come to you and you will try to be cautious or uh, warn others because your attention will become aware of that as soon as you will see that because that canvas of your attention itself will start throwing out these pictures out of itself through your past experiences onto the canvas this is a living canvas or maybe that if you have got some ideas which you have premeditated or thought of of the future future for example you must have thought of somebody that if i meet that man i will tell him like this as soon as you will meet that man your attention will start bubbling out with those ideas that are coming about this man and you will start addressing to him according it's all stored up within you whether it is about the future or about the past is given out of the attention through that bubbling process which depends on your dragging nature where are you dragged that's called as vritti but i don't know what you call it in english language i don't know what is the what you are prone to vritti is a very neutral word it doesn't mean anything bad it means where you are drawn to vritti means a temperament by which you are drawn to now whatever is your temperament it acts like that for example if you see a man walking say blindly he cannot see things one person may get angry with that person another may have pity for that person third may come forward to help him out is the vritti is the temperament that you have developed through your three trigunas that's why this attention becomes identified with you and when you are identified with this your vritti your temperaments then you are still in a misidentified area but after you get the realization you are not still identified with that state of mind in which you see your ego and super ego as myths still you get caught up into your ego and super ego and that's why your attention is still in a mess in a pure simple way of attention in an innocent child he sees everything in pratyaksha means in actual experiencing of something for a child because he has no memory so he will have to burn his hand to feel that this burns he has to touch something cold to know that it is cold so his memory is not yet built up so into the actual experiencing of it he lives but that actual experiencing becomes memory and once the memory is built up stronger the whole personality is affected by memory all the conditioning of all kinds come through that your reading if it has been a ego and a super ego then maybe that if it was ego you must have felt happy if it is satisfying to your ego you feel very happy if it is not if it is super ego if you are suppressed by this then you feel very unhappy so both things like happiness or un- unhappiness are the states where you are still in the myth still the myth exist you have to still go beyond so if you feel happy about some situation you should know you are only happy before realization because it is giving some support to your ego to bloat and if you are unhappy then you should know that there is some sort of a separation on your ego and there's a super ego developing so both the situations have been of no help to you of no help to you for your growth 
except that both these institutions develop so much that you are away from the real experiencing. The real experiencing stops because your attention is so much muddled up. So on one side if you move, on the left hand side, your attention is muddled up with fear, with pain, with unhappiness, with hopelessness, dejection. The other side, if you indulge too much onto the right hand side, little bit also, you start getting elated, excited, over dominating. So one side you become completely frozen, on the other side you become completely heated up. Both these things are again movement on the wrong direction. Even in the center when the attention is kept, that you keep your attention more in the center. There also, because it's a very sensitive point, it doesn't stay there. For example, when we say use fire, we can use it for burning the house. In the same way we can use it for creating smoke. But we can also use this fire in its proper way, if we use it in its proper proportion for cooking the food, for giving us light. If it is too much, it can burn like a big fire. If it is too little, it can burn like smoke. But in the center, when you know how to balance it, then you can use it for your own purpose, for cooking or for giving light, and then for a puja too. Realization is the only way. By realization, your attention gets higher and gets separated from that strata from where these things bubble in. You understand my point now? The strata goes higher, the attention goes higher at a higher state, and these things that used to bring in, by right side movement you get big shape, confusion, first you get confusion. The attention though after Realization comes up, still on the sides they just go down, this side or that side, according to your vrittis. And when these identifications still act in them, they are prone to go down again in there and again start bubbling out the same thing as they had. Now, <clears throat> one has to become lighter in one's own mind and should think that we have dropped all that, now why are we there? One should become lighter with all that load flowing out because you are here to raise your attention higher and higher so that you come up to a point where you become one with the attention Already your attention is sparkled because through your attention you can see what's wrong with you, you can see what's wrong with others, and you can see how far you are going with yourself. But the progress is retarded because you do not know that this attention is pure form, and all that you get into this attention is a mythical stuff, is a myth. If you drop this myth gradually, treat everything as a myth and not depend on becoming unhappy or happy, just seeing the thing, your attention will take a flight and it will be at a much higher level residing there. So the difference between a person who is a realized and a not realized is this, that the attention which was giving myth as reality to you is gone now, is gone higher. It can see that it is myth, attention can clearly see that it is myth and you can see that yourself and you can remove yourself from that. That, of course, I have to give you a push, no doubt, and I am working hard on that to give you a push, but you should also know that mythical things must be dropped out, otherwise you will not grow. All mythical things must be dropped down, and the best way to do it is to be in thoughtless awareness, because as soon as you transcend these three gunas, you become thoughtlessly aware. You have to cross Agya. Once you cross Agya, these three gunas 
absolutely you go into a state where you are gunatit, you are beyond gunas. So you do not deliberately do anything, but it just works out. So now for you, because you are enlightened now, is to understand that our attention has to move higher and higher, at a higher space. Now actually what has happened in Realization? Your Kundalini has risen and has come up, just like you can say a small thin hair, one hair, see, and that has broken your sastra, and now the grace is flowing into it. But it's a very small movement that has taken place, of course, which is a very difficult movement, no doubt, but it has taken place. Now you have not expanded like this. Your chakras are only pierced in the center, but the rest of the attention is still intact. Actually, it is so intact that you don't even feel that it is pierced. Now you have to expand that, open it out, so that more strands of Kundalini can rise, and your attention, which is in these centers, expands. By expansion, it drives out all that is mythical on the sides, on every center. We have our attention, which is being enlightened in the center through this light passing through. But light is too small for the darkness that you have collected. But when we are realized, there is light that has come in us. We have to grow it only by separating our attention from the myths. Is all mythical? I also play with you, because unless and until you are sure, I am not going to give you a wrong. Idea about yourself. I want to see how far still your attention is moving, and I know still you are not sure. Still you are not sure of yourself. That's why the confidence is not there. First of all, you have to learn how to drive. Then you are tested. There will be five stones put together. The distance will be only that hardly a car can pass through, and the fellow will say you bring it zigzag, and you cannot do it. Why? That's how he makes you a master. The mastery of your attention will come when you will start seeing that it is all a myth that upsets you. It's all a myth that upsets you. Just throw it away. Just throw it away and understand that you are the eternal attention, that you are the eternal life, that only thing that keeps you away from it is ignorance, and the ignorance is too simple to understand that you have accepted myth as truth. Just drop it, it's all myth. You'll be amazed how your attention will rise, and you'll see all these nonsensical things which used to frighten you or to elate you will drop out, and you'll just smile at it. And then only you are going to enjoy yourself fully because your attention will be completely drenched into the bliss of Self. I am saying, you will, I say, you are already drenched into that bliss. Keep it up. Now how to do it, actually in every day-to-day -day life? How to kill the memory of the past? To kill the memory of the past is to have new memories. You must remember when you got your first Realization, Always think of it. Whenever any such memory comes to you, you try to think how you got your Realization. Any memory that is troublesome or even so-called elating, you just try to remember how Realization has come to you. When you feel aggressive about something or angry something, just try to remember how you felt the joy of surrendering. Just think of that joy of surrendering, of dissolving yourself. So the new memories must be built up. If you start building up new memories, then you will start collecting moments to establish other moments which have such memories. Like a memory when you try to help somebody, you raise the Kundalini of someone. Now the problem would be, when you will be raising the Kundalini of others, you will be in thoughtless awareness, there won't be any thought, and thought is the only thing which impresses. But that time you can record the joy of raising the Kundalini. 
if you could record the joy of raising the kundalini of others you will feel a new wealth of these beautiful moments will be accumulated and all those moments which were giving you confusion or fear or so called unhappiness and happiness will drop and pure joy will remain because now most of the experiences you have had are more of joy joy has no thoughts it's just a, just an experience pratyaksh that's why i said you keep your eyes open i hope you will understand what i mean by that may god bless you